My name is Marco Lachlan, the Managing Director of the CCC. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, today we're looking at ITIL 4, some of the new elements of ITIL 4, um, and overlaying that with our recent CCC and Axelos white paper entitled ITIL 4 um, and the Cloud. And joining us today, we have ITIL Royalty with us. Uh, I'm joined by Marcel Fodderer. So Marcel, yeah. if you could just take a moment to briefly introduce yourself, please. Yeah. Yeah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or even good night for everybody. Uh, I am Marcel Fuderer, Master Trainer in IT Preneurs, and also involved uh, in the development of ITIL 4 as a member of the Lead Architect team. Um, so if you have complaints about ITIL 4, you can blame me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <clears throat> I'm also uh, involved as an author in the next higher level publications in the uh, ITIL uh, 4 uh, book set and, and uh, qualification program. Very briefly, my introduction. Great, thank thank you so much, Marcel. As we had, as we said, ITIL royalty here, uh, straight from the horse's mouth, involves an ITIL 4, and that's very important. Marcel's going to set us up today with some um, areas in ITIL 4. Now, just briefly, um, the Cloud Credential Council is a global community-driven organization that empowers companies in their digital transformation journey. And the CCC does this by offering vendor-neutral certification for IT professionals, which includes areas such as cloud, big data, IoT, blockchain, and artificial intelligence. And um, CCC certification programs are designed to help IT professionals and organizations maximize the potential of digital transformation. A few words on digital transformation coming up shortly. Now, today's agenda, we're looking at ITIL 4, all things ITIL 4, all things ITIL 4 and the cloud. And in particular, Marcel is going to provide us with a brief introduction of some of the new models in ITIL 4, some of the reasons why they're here, which is very important. Um, how they can be used in your organization. And we're going to overlap that in the second part of the session with how they apply to cloud or hybrid cloud environments. And uh, what I've pulled together with Marcel is a number of segments from our recent white paper entitled ITIL 4 for the Cloud, published by Axlos, released with ITIL 4. Um, and there's some relevant points there we want to cover off and then um, we'll discuss that in a bit more detail. So, Marcel, over to you for the next few minutes. Take us through some of the new stuff in ITIL. I'll drive the slides, so you just let me know um, how you want to proceed. Yeah, thank you very much, Mark. Um, yeah, why ITIL? Um, you know, uh, when you look at the previous version as, uh, of ITIL, uh, ITIL version 3, that was launched quite a long time ago. Uh, it was released in 2007. So that's already 12 years back. And when you look over these last 12 years, you know, uh, we are dealing with a complete different environment. Look around us, what, what changed? There, there are enormous amount of changes, the way enterprises are run, the way IT organizations are managed, the way projects are managed methodologies introduced over the last couple of years. They changed the whole landscape that IT organizations and businesses are, are in nowadays. Um, also, when you look at the technology, that changed also enormously. Look at only the way information is, is available for us nowadays. So it's not only available via the television or radio, but also via laptops, tablets, uh, mobile phones, smartphones. It, it doesn't matter what kind of device you are using, the information is available for you. So all these different aspects are triggered actually also the need also to um, release a new version of ITIL, to, to bring it up to date, to make it prepared for the future, to align it with the new methodologies um, used in many organizations like Agile, like Scrum, like uh, DevOps, um, like other methodologies, just to bring it up to date and make ITIL prepared for the future. And that are the underlying reasons, uh, in a nutshell, that Axelos decided sometime in, in 2017 already 
to form a group of people together, the lead architect team and we together started to design the architecture of, of ITIL 4 and uh, that the result of that initiative that last month or now February already, we are in April now, so last February ITIL 4 foundation was released, the book is released, the exams are released and the next publications are going to be released in the second half of this year. Next slide, please. And actually, when you look at the, the core model of ITIL 4, um, maybe uh, many of you, they, you know, the core model of ITIL version 3 with the circles in it, the, the rounded arrows with the surface strategy in the center and the rounded surface design transition, etc., etc. That core model now has been changed into what you see on this slide. And that core model, you can look at it as, let's say, the universe or the galaxy of everything that happens in, in, in an IT environment together with the business to let it function. And so this is the new core model. And that core model is there to, um, to identify what are the core elements to transfer any opportunity or idea or any new requirement in the form of demand in the most efficient and effective way to valuable outcomes received by not only the customer but to everybody who is involved in making that product or service possible. So already one new concept in ITIL is the co-creation of value but I, I will explain more about that later. But when you look at this service value system in this system, we find the core components to make it possible uh, to transfer, transform any opportunity and demand into valuable outcomes. These core components are the guiding principles. Um, in 2016, these guiding principles were already introduced in the ITIL practitioner publication. Now these principles were updated uh, in the practitioner, it were 10 principles, and now we have seven principles or nine principles. Now we have seven principles. A new element in ITIL is governance. Governance is based on the evaluation of the stakeholder needs. The board of directors should provide clear direction and management should prepare the activities and build the solutions and run the solutions and monitor and improve whatever is necessary to realize the direction given by the board of directors. So um, also in this model, we have the practices. The practices is the next step in the evolution of processes. Practices are broader than uh, processes uh, and continual improvement. Continual improvement is also a key element is whatever we do, we need to look into the mirror. How are we doing? How should we do? And what is it that we need to do to be able to improve? And actually the area where the real action takes place is in the center of this service value system. That's what we call the service value chain. And um, in a couple of seconds, we are going to have a more detailed look into the service value chain, uh, but that's where the action takes place. That's where the real value streams are going through. So ITIL is not based on processes anymore, but actually the starting point is the co-delivery of value via optimization of value streams. That's borrowed from Lean, but you know, ITIL 4 is absolutely aligned with these modern um, methodologies like Agile, like Lean, like Scrum, etc., etc., and also aligned with COVID. It is not replacing the other frameworks it is aligned with. In ITIL, nothing new has been invented, but actually we make use of what's already out there and we combine it. So when you look at ITIL 3, that was still having a limited focus, but ITIL 4 is having a much broader focus because we make use of what's out there and what is used. And also, so ITIL 4 is optimally aligned with the modern way of working, with the modern technology like cloud, uh, big data, Internet of Things, etc. Uh, so it's optimally prepared for the future. So summarizing, the 
Service Value System facilitates the integration and coordination of various organizational components and activities and provides a strong unified value focused direction for the organization. Next slide, please. So this is the, now we zoomed in into that centerpiece of the SVS. That centerpiece, that's what we call the service value chain and that's where the action takes place. And um, so item four is supporting an optimal flow of the value stream. So you need to think what is, what is it that we should produce as outcomes on the right hand side value? And what is it that we need to do to support the valuable outcomes? And that is um, explained in this service value chain. And this service value chain has a number of activities like plan on the top side, at the bottom improve, on the left hand side engage, design and transition, obtain and build and deliver and support. And all these activities, they will result in so-called outputs in the form of products and services. And the moment that the customer is starting to use, to use these products and services, that will uh, result in valuable outcomes. So these activities are supporting an optimized flow of different activities to transform demand and opportunities into valuable outcomes. Examples of value streams. Um, yeah, thank you. So this is, for example, how a value stream can look like. And another one, uh, Mark, yeah, it's a more simplified one. So the dark blue one, that's, for example, um, a flow that can be can represent a standard change, for example. A user requests something uh, for a new PC, then it also it needs to uh, be obtained. And then uh, via a standard procedure, it's going to be delivered and supported. And that standard PC immediately is able to deliver valuable outputs. So depending on the outcomes that you are looking for, you are going to design multiple and different value streams across the value chain. So summarizing this service value chain is an operating model which outlines the key activities required to respond to demand and facilitate value creation through the creation and management of products and services. Underneath the SVS and underneath the service value chain, we have a new element in ITIL 4, which we call the four dimensions. Although really new, that's the next question. Uh, in ITIL version 3, we already spoke about the four P's of service design. But actually in ITIL version 3, these four P's of service design, people, products, uh, partners, and now suddenly I forgot the fourth piece, but it doesn't matter. Um, uh, these four P's were more or less suddenly falling out of the sky and were not having a very important position. So quite and too often overlooked and not taken very serious. But these four P's or four dimensions that we call them now, in ITIL 4 they have a very important and dominant position to ensure that we are going to be able to create a very reliable and solid SVS and service value chain and practices. So these four dimensions are the four critical pillars to create a solid service management house. And these four pillars are organization and people, information and technology, value streams and processes and partners and suppliers. Um, they are all over the place, just like the ITIL guiding principles. That's an element introduced in the ITIL practitioner in 2016, uh, but now uh, from nine reduced to seven, these ITIL guiding principles are, let's say, uh, principles that you can put into practice on a day-to-day -day basis. Really practical guiding principles. Um, they are all over the place and always you need to take them always into account. So what are these guiding principles? The focus on value, for example. Whatever you do, everything that you do, it should be clear what at the end of the day, what kind of value that is going to deliver for customers and other stakeholders. If you cannot explain it, then eliminate it. Just like um, optimizing the value stream and value stream mapping is one example to have a continuous focus on, on value. Utilize what you already have. Don't start from scratch. That is related to start where you are. Um, don't reinvent the wheel. No, 
uh, recognize where you are, what your current position is, and start from there. And progress iteratively with feedback. That is borrowed also from Agile. You know, many small steps forward are creating one big result at the end. And you never know exactly where you are going to end. But it's much better to make smaller steps than put a lot of time and money and resources in developing and, and designing, uh, let's say, 100 new functionalities, which takes enormous amount of time to build these 100 new functionalities. And the moment that you're going to release that new product with the 100 new functionalities, the requirements from the business changed enormously. So from these 100 functionalities, only 25 are used. So the rest is waste, waste of money, waste of resources, waste of time. ITIL is also a fan or is promoting breaking down the walls between departments. You know, departments and actually also processes are silos. And we want to get rid of these silos and siloed thinking. So collaborate and promote visibility. Also aligned with the DevOps philosophy, right? Breaking down the walls between development and operations and security and other related departments. At the end of the day, we all have the same goals to achieve and objectives to achieve. So break down the walls, um, look each other into the eyes and work together and um, um, talk with each other and not talking about each other. Think and work holistically. That principle is one to one related to the four dimensions. So take these four dimensions into account value streams and processes, organization and people, information and technology, and partners and suppliers. And the, uh, keep it simple and practical. I always say it is so easy to make things complicated in IT. So the real challenge is the ultimate sophistication is simplicity. And that's the real challenge. Keep it simple and practical. And the last principle, optimize and automate. Um, optimize and automate, optimize your the way you work, optimize your value streams and, and automate where necessary and opt automate where possible. And also these principles, you can relate them, all of them, one to one, how to do it also with cloud environments. But we are going to talk about that later. So summarizing what is new in ITIL in relationship with the cloud. So ITIL 4, it's all about collaboration, communication, and the co-creation of value. It is not um, the, the right time anymore to create something and that is handed over um, for 100% to the customer. No, it is essential and critical that both the provider and the consumer slash customer are going to work together in the creation of value and the value the requirements, they change more frequently than 10 years back. The value change may be every day. So it is really essential and critical um, uh, to co-create the value and work together. Um, and to be able to do it, you know, it's not only the relationship between the, the provider and the consumer that is important, but you also have to deal with the external suppliers. So you need to manage the relationship across all the stakeholders that are involved in delivering that service to the different stakeholders. And the chain is as strong as the weakest link. So you need to ensure that each element, each component across the whole chain is involved, is connected to, and is, very, is a strong element across the whole chain. And the better the relationships are, the better the end results are going to be. And every component, every stakeholder across the whole chain uh, should recognize some piece of the overall value to be delivered to these different stakeholders. We move from a... Uh, I, I wasn't finished, uh, Mark. Can you go back one slide? Sorry, Marcel, we reverse <laughs> back. Thank you. <laughs> I, I already do my best to talk, quick, talk quickly, but I'm not yes. that quick. <laughs> Okay, um, so we move from a life cycle model to service value system. You know, the life cycle model is perceived as old fashioned as a waterfall approach, while the service value system with the different activities can be utilized in both the modern agile world and, and DevOps world and also in the old fashioned waterfall approach. 
exactly the same justification when we look at the, the next box, the value chain activities and the value streams can be utilized for both uh, worlds, the, the, the modern world and the traditional world. The guiding principles, which I already talked about, are, uh, are introduced in ITIL 4 as one of the key aspects in ITIL That's, that can be translated in, in, into most of the day-to-day -day operational activities. The four dimensions I already talked about. Governance, it's a key element in ITIL, which is going to be borrowed from, from COVID, of course. A lot of elements in the governance elements are going to be borrowed from, from COVID, but we are not going to copy or replace COVID. It is aligned with. And processes evolve to practices. I mentioned that already when we looked at the core components of the SVS. Practices are much broader. So when you look at the overall model on top, we have the value streams supporting, let's say, an optimum flow to transform demand to valuable outcomes. To support these value streams, we have these value chain activities. And depending on what kind of value stream, you are, good, you are going to utilize one or more practices. So for example, incident management, serv service desk, incident management, problem management, change management practices throughout the different value chain activities. OK, next slide. And then it's up to you, Mark. <laughs> Okay, Marcel, thank you. Apologies for jumping the gun there. Um, no, no some, problem. No some problem. Good, 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 interesting facts towards the end. Marcel, thank you so much for that high level overview of some of the new and critical components of the new Idol 4 Foundation. We thought it was important to get Marcel involved today to give us that broad introduction because now the next section. I'm going to spend a bit of time overlaying some cloud elements on top of Idle 4. And we certainly are going to hear from Marcel again. I've asked Marcel to join us in the second part of this uh, presentation as well. So he will uh, interrupt our comments and uh, welcome for that, Marcel. Now, okay. briefly, I'm going to do this very quickly, setting the scene. Normally on presentations, we take a lot longer on this sec section. We don't need to do that today, but in other sessions that we run, we go into more detail here. Just a brief mention, as Marcel has already said, you know, we're in this thing called the fourth industrial revolution, and it has been driven by the latest in technologies. One of those technologies, cloud. We're seeing more and more new technology and software becoming very embedded in the workplace, but also in society. And what this represents is a massive time of change and upheaval. So in fourth industrial revolution, another name, Industry 4.0, another name, Digital Transformation, all relevance of the same thing. And briefly, Digital Transformation, we could do a day on this. It's really about changing and improving a business model, but using and underpinned by the latest technologies to see changes in business strategy, better enabled workforce, innovation and process, improved technology, all going back to this changing the business model of what you do. A representation of some of the more recent digital enabled organizations or cloud natives, you'll be familiar with some, if not all of these. And what happens when organizations stay still don't adopt new technologies, don't adopt new platforms, refuse or cannot adopt new ways of working. Idle is a new way of working, as, as Marcel said. You run the risk of, like Blockbuster and these types of organizations, potentially closing down. The current situation today, facing organizations and their IT functions globally is that of change, constant change, new technology, all require, requiring new ways of working. It opens up opportunities, which you can read here. It challenges what we do today, changes the way we work, changes business models. If you think about it, even idle changed, as Marcel said, from uh, the previous version to this version, complete, a huge change in there but driven by the requirements of today. Again, I could spend a lot of time on this example for the purpose of today, I'll, I will keep it brief, but we do have other sessions where we go into this in more detail. I like to use this example. We get in the time machine, we go back to 1939, and this thing called the typewriter pool. 
a warehouse full of men and women, possibly children, using typewriters, old technology, mechanical, very laborious, um, in rooms like this, outputting data information. You have people and productivity and tools all in here. From a service management perspective, for those in that world, you could have incident management, the typewriter breaks, we need to fix it. Request fulfillment, the, the idle practices. Uh, I need number of typewriters, availability management, availability of the pool, availability of the stock and that and so forth. So that was an industry back in 1939, but something came along and did away with that industry. That industry no longer exists. The representation here of the new technology that came at that time is represented here with a mainframe. And you can see that the mainframe took away the work and changed how these people work um, and did various different things. You will see that the amount of people working in the mainframe, we have two people working in the mainframe environment, we have hundreds in this typewriter pool. What you don't see are the new jobs and the new ways of working built around the, the, the mainframe itself. The, the, the thing about this example is the new technology back then was the mainframe that disrupted the ways of working that was there before and how people worked and how they had to retrain and upskill and do learn things different ways. The technology that's changed us today is generally cloud and then the digital technologies behind that, the clouds, the big data is underpinned by cloud, blockchain, AI, all these different things. So cloud is the thing that has changed us today and that's why we wanted to set the scene. And in a moment now we'll overlay some aspects of cloud for idle four as we've presented in a particular white paper. This image here just represents cloud. Just one thing of note, on the left hand side, if you're looking at the five essential characteristics of cloud and A, you haven't heard about the five essential characteristics or B, you're only familiar with one or two, take that as um, some area you need to address because these are the critical things of cloud, the basics that a lot of people and organizations have still yet to understand. So now we want to get into this part of it, and this is where Marcel, you'll pop back in um, over these slides. Um, Idle 4 on the cloud. So as Marcel presented, Idle 4 changed and was released to Idle 4 Foundation, released in February of 2019. And to coincide with that release, the CCC developed this recent paper, which was released alongside um, Idle 4, which is really fantastic. Um, it is The white paper itself is 25, 26 pages long. It is big for a white paper, but we found that we had so much to say and so much to overlay on top of Idle that we kept going. We could have put more in. But the areas we look at in the white paper are on screen. And the four areas, just because of time today, we're looking at our service value system for cloud, service value chains adopted for cloud, service level agreements, and DevOps and change control. And these overlay everything that Marcel had presented earlier on regarding uh, Idle and Idle 4. I'm going to introduce these conversations. If I may interrupt you for the yep. brief slide, um, Mark. Um, also, what we um, that, that we can mention here in this slide are the four dimensions, you know, yes. the four dimensions are, let's say, the critical pillars underneath the SVS, underneath yes. the service value chain and the practices. But especially when you think about using services from cloud providers, the what questions when you think about information and especially technology dimension, uh, organization and people dimension, Yes. Um, uh, maybe, yeah. Also, your cloud provider should know what his what his step is when you look at the different value streams. What kind of value he should deliver uh, from that step in in the in the value stream. Um, so, also a cloud provider uh, should be involved. Uh, any partner should be involved in making a service possible so for any transformation from any opportunity and demand into whatever you need to accomplish as valuable outcomes mm -hmm. um, when you are dealing with cloud providers uh, think about um, uh, integrating and let the cloud provider participate in whatever you need to do to make the outcome possible 
And that yeah. is, that is yeah. both in the, in the SVS, in the service value chain, in the value streams, in the four dimensions, and also in the practices. It's fantastic. And using that four dimensions model, and again, people will, you'll be given access to the recording of this. So if you don't have that dimensions model, it's in the slide you can access later. Um, uh, technology is only uh, like a part of it. Organization and people, Absolutely. information yeah. and technology, partners and suppliers, value streams and processes. It's only a part of the conversation with a cloud provider, not the conversation with a cloud provider. And uh, I think that's a fantastic overlay, Marcel. Um, so yeah. thank you. Good insights there. What we have in the white paper are what we call value chain conversations, and I'll, I'll position these with you as we go through these. So typically, an incident manager, how do I manage, restore, and these are basically challenges when traditional organizations using cloud, how do I manage, restore, and report on incidents uh, when I have no control over what they do and no access to their in, in, environments? Um, a problem manager, why won't public cloud service provider give me the root cause analysis for the major application issue that we had? I'm under pressure from the CIO. The CIO, IT seems to be provided by a number of different cloud service providers, but no one seems accountable. We're still, the cloud providers are only responsible for certain pieces of each service. They won't talk to each other about when problems arise. These are real conversations that we've put into this white paper. Finance manager, I was told that moving to the cloud is going to save us a lot of money. I've not seen any savings to date. Why not? All these questions, what are the answers? Part of it is understanding the context of cloud and the differences it brings, which we have put into some of the paper um, and uh, using the dimensions model and understanding those differences. So an incident manager trying to report on something they don't have control over. Maybe they don't need to. They need to move up that chain and have a look at that the problem manager not getting rca well you haven't bought that from a cloud provider you've bought availability of service not necessarily root cause analysis uh you have to accept that um from the cio perspective can you really outsource accountability the answer generally is no you shouldn't and what you're finding is you tr should you outsource how much of the responsibility should you outsource and what responsibility remains internally going back to those dimensions that people aspect and what do we expect from our providers um, and so forth now the interesting thing if you look at these conversations individually they all represent in the old ways of idle a process question instant management having a question problem management having a, a question when you put all these together it actually becomes in the new construct in idol a value chain conversation if all these groups got together and asked these questions and used the constructs from idol 4 to try and figure out the answer using a value chain approach they will probably have some success with that because they're working together working holistically looking at this not from a technology perspective but from they all have outcomes to achieve they're slightly different, but the overall outcome is for the business to enable to use these services to deliver business at the end of the day. Yeah. So I, I think, I, Marcel, I, this is a good example of taking the value chain approach and adding in these value chain conversations, put them end to end holistically through that value chain uh, model. Yeah, one of the uh, participants in this webinar wants to send the finance manager to the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, the, the, and, and these are conversations that we've picked up from the CCC in classrooms and talking to people. They're real. I think we've got about nine or ten of them in there, and they're yeah. thought provoking. And you do step back and say, "Well, this is reality." Now, how do we use these new models to look at this thing end to end? That's what cloud is about. You're buying services uh from multiple providers sometimes ha and you're having to put that together your organization your cio your finance manager working together to make sure the money's there uh, sometimes it's not about saving money in cloud more often it's about getting agility and better technologies and something that your competitor doesn't have cost savings can come and do come but you have to i think the four dimensions model is good for a finance manager it, it works it works again too long to go into today but um certainly uh 
Unfortunately, the finance managers won't be going to the cloud, but we'll be expecting savings from the cloud unless we re-educate them. Yep. Um, to further on with the value chain activities, Marcel presented this uh, image earlier on about the value chain, which is uh, really good. But we've looked at identifying relevant service value chain activities for cloud. So you won't find that in the ITIL 4 publication for a foundation. It doesn't need to go there. But we decided, that's why we decided to put the white paper together as a, a companion um, to ITIL 4. So we have included uh, information and guidance on all these value chains for cloud, very brief. So the plan, engage, obtain, build, design, transition, deliver and support all have sections in the white paper that give you the likes of information that you see here it's basic it's general but it's very very relevant and often over missed even this section plan phase for cloud using the idle for value chain model states the following cloud plan should be aligned to the overall business strategy in some cases we find it is many it's not should take into consideration the needs of the business IT stakeholders, and it should include policy statements. In in the wild, we find that these are often missing. Organizational vision, how cloud maps to that, which uh, generally it's not about cost savings, but there's a lot more. The objectives, key drivers for adopting cloud, and then you can generally look at value drivers as opposed to cost savings, change the conversation with the finance uh, director there risks and issues why you should or should not use certain clouds and policy statements the glossary for cloud very important because that glossary gives you a general language across your organization about a lot of cloud terms there's lots of them there many organizations fail to to see that so as i said we've included that's just an example of some guidance for the plan phase there's a lot more guidance on the other phases within the white paper and part of this webinar is to encourage those that have not downloaded the white paper to download it read it and use it we will give you a link to that white paper towards the end of this session another area that we looked at is we looked at this because cloud so service level agreements for cloud um, again, the, the models Marcel presented for ITIL 4 cover service level agreements and how you look at those holistically, we wanted to add in a little extra regarding cloud and some of the differences. So you will find that cloud changes the type of service level agreements which organizations now have to accept and sign up to. And one of those major changes is having to accept the terms and conditions of the cloud service provider with little to no capacity to negotiate those terms and conditions. Well, that's a big change. And you might think holistically, Marcel, that, well, that's a challenge for us because holistically we want to be able to provide the business back what they want. But as part of that value chain conversation, it's about informing those stakeholders that to use a lot of these, especially public cloud services, we have little to no room to negotiate. We have to accept what we're given. Um, and that's why we've added this small model to the ITIL 4 for the cloud white paper to help you with that as part of that value chain conversation. And you can see important considerations we have there. You can read those. Do we know and understand about this change? Do we have you know, the capability of dealing with this? And especially about expectation level setting. You can read more in the white paper, but you know we want to accept that the service levels for public clouds are generally non-negotiable. Analyze the service levels which will be provided for that cloud-based service, you have to do that. Review the full terms and conditions which govern that cloud service, read the contract. Identify the differences in customer expectation against what is being offered by the cloud service provider, and then update the customer, consumer, and stakeholders on the difference in what they state they required from the service and what the cloud service provider will provide. Yeah. Can, it's can not I add that something? difficult. Yes. Mark, can I add something? I was uh, going to bring you in there, Marcel, and say yes. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, you know, looking to a service level agreement, um, um, that is also going to change when you look at, at the current time and the future time. You know, the customer is looking for flexible value uh, today they were looking for this type of value while tomorrow or next week they look to a totally different kind of value yes. and that 
requires a high level of flexibility and agility also for the from the service providers and as part of the chain as part of the value stream and the chain also the cloud provider should be able to deliver more and more agility and flexibility so service level agreements are okay but it is not for 100% covering the 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 needs and the value that customers are looking for mm -hmm. yeah you know so um, service level agreement i look to service level agreement as more or less an, an an older instrument to manage the expectations but yeah the needs of the business are changing more and more often and and is the service level agreement it is an important element a starting it is a starting point not an end point Maybe oh absolutely yeah. absolutely that model there you have is iterative it it, it yeah. gets you to, as you said because the key thing we saw is the change in expectation of the stakeholder or customer or whatever that is against what you can get from some of these clouds and you have to manage that expectation sometimes yeah. the expectation from the stakeholder exceeds what you can get you have to manage that and explain that sometimes uh, the cloud services are flexible not in the contract but in how they deliver the service to you that you can gain that benefit or that flexibility on behalf yeah. of the stakeholder yeah for example automatic upscaling or downscaling of absolutely. capacity yeah. absolutely and that's yeah. why we say analyze the contract review it because not every cloud provider has that ability to upscale and auto scale uh, and if that's a requirement and you don't have it you have a decision to make hmm. uh, or reset expectations but if yeah. you can't get that level of flexibility from a cloud provider your strategy was wrong because you went into the wrong cloud in the first place so it's it's very good as marcel is saying service level agreements are no longer the end point they're a starting point for the conversation and they're iterative and that's why we put in this little model here it's quick it's i won't say it's easy once you get to the people aspect but it's an easy model to follow very easy to digest easy to use to try and get expectations set against reality um so good, good, Marcel. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, Marcel, um, DevOps, uh, it's really big right now. I think yeah. I think that's a fair statement to make. I don't think anybody will argue that. Now, for the purpose of today's presentation, we're really just mentioning DevOps briefly. And I think, you know, from my read of Idol 4, when, when I looked at it um, towards the, the end of last year, it does acknowledge faster change is required, faster velocity, value stream. That, that That's really where idle force trying to go now as well not to replace devops but to have that agility uh, and to interface with the likes of a model like devops um so they can sit side by side and work together it's, absolutely it's, absolutely yeah. you know when you look at the scope of idle 4 compared to the previous scope of the scope of the previous version the scope has become much broader so for example when you only already look at the certain practices uh, the the practices uh, for example software development is now in the idle 4 uh, framework uh, project management risk management yeah. organizational yeah. change management uh, hr type of practices so the scope yeah. has become much broader to cover let's say the whole value stream from the early ideas at the beginning of the whole journey until um, the moment that the service is going to be uh, put into the elderly house, you know, and everything yes. that happens in between. Uh, so the scope has been increased. So idle 4 is also taking DevOps into account. It is not describing DevOps, by the way, we can yes. have uh, discussions for hours what exactly DevOps is, yes. <laughs> but uh, DevOps is much more than only automation. Um, that's only 20% of it. Uh, yes. But um, yeah, uh, one of the principles, you know, collaborate and promote visibility and, and work holistically, that is, that are principles, guiding principles that are related to breaking down the walls between, for example, development and operations. Mm -hmm. But there are more walls to, to get rid of, you know? <laughs> and, 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 I even say our finance friend there, finance manager, <laughs> yeah. into that conversation, our HR yeah. people. Uh, it, it, it's big and beyond. As you said, we could be days at this. What I wanted to just overlay here was because it's going back to the white paper is we have put in a number of pages in the white paper regarding DevOps, but I wanted to highlight just some of the market analysis. So the CCC 
and that's at the DevOps Agile Skills Association. We're doing some continual research at the moment and we've put some of this information in showing some of the barriers in adopting DevOps. And again, how cloud requires this more agile DevOpsy type value stream environment. It's flexible, it's quick, it's on demand, all those characteristics we look at. But what kind of limits the benefits you get from cloud are things like flexible bureaucratic processes, flexible people, these command and control management structures that, that exist. As you said, Marcel, not implementing the right automation. The DevOps is not just automation, but it requires automation and strict adherence to change requests and all this kind of stuff. And there's an appreciation with the new models coming out of Idle 4 to have a more flexible approach that works with the the ideas of DevOps and um, together. The, the, as you said, it's now more value stream, what's right for the, the right outcomes as opposed to outputs. So just to mention there, we've done some analysis. Um, we've overlaid some stuff on DevOps. We haven't rewritten it in the white paper either, but we have a couple of pages on DevOps is very interesting. So I would encourage people to, uh, to read there. Um, to read it there. Um, Marcel, we're coming to the end of the section here, but uh, I use this slide just to pull together, just to reiterate to folks uh, joining us the constructs from Idle 4, service value, uh, system service value chain, uh, the four dimensions model, uh, the guiding principles, and how in this 25 page white, or tw I think it's 26 pages, uh, the white paper we wrote with Axelos, how we're overlaying elements of cloud more specifically relating to these areas um, to make it more relevant. And I have a note here just to say on, on this section that of all these things, again, read the white paper. If you haven't read it, read it. If you've read it, read it again. There's a lot of information in there. It's the guiding principles that are very relevant and can, are so practical in any sense uh, that from my perspective, when you're looking at cloud, you you know, focus on value. It's not just cost savings like the finance manager. What's the value we get out? What are the things we no longer have to do? And what are the capabilities that it gives us that we don't have? Start where you are. Many organizations have started with cloud. They've brought cloud in. They do this terrible thing called cloud first. We have a different view on that. We'll talk about that on another, another call. Um, and are probably not getting the value from cloud that they thought because they looked at it from either cost savings or let's just do it because everybody else is doing it. They didn't do that strategy, that plan phase. Remember earlier on, we, we looked at plan from the uh, from, from the, the model. Um, so reevaluate where you are. Are you getting the right things or stop and figure out what where it's gone wrong? Collaborate that value chain conversation. It's no longer a process conversation about incident management and problem management and change management and the final. It's a value stream conversation about what are we doing with this technology and so forth. Up, you know, think holistically, optimize, and the, the, the most simplest of all, keep it simple and practical. So there's tips in the white paper about how to overlay cloud on idle, but how to achieve these very basic things. I think that's been very successful. Now, just a, a brief note here as we come towards the end. Um, we do believe at the CCC that upskilling IT professionals to deliver value from digital technologies as opposed to doing tasks is really, really important. Um, and focusing, this is critical, focusing on the technology alone will not deliver digital success, will not deliver digital innovation, will not deliver digital value. It will only deliver new technology. And that's nearly and worthless to any organization today. And, and it will that? create new problems. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely, it will create you more problems than you think. So it'll get you yep. further away from those guiding principles and further away from anything remotely looking like value. Yeah, and that's why uh, that's why the four dimensions are so important to take all four into account. Not o not only the information and technology part, but also the other three pillars. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, uh, the technology is only one part of the four, and only yep. one part of that in general. Yes. Now, a quick note: um, the CCC we're currently running our digital skills survey. We are asking you to promote the initiative for you, your customers, um, your organization. 
please fill in a simple survey. Uh, we're sharing the results throughout the year. The more inputs we get, the more surveys completed, the more accurate and relevant the results will be for you when we share them with you throughout the year. So please, please take a couple of minutes is all it takes to fill in the survey. Um, you can see the links here, digital skills survey, the link there. A quick mention, uh, as well as the idle four for cloud white paper, uh, we have a tool that's available for free, the cloud adoption readiness assessment, the individual readiness report um, to quickly assess your organization, your department, your team's readiness for digital. It's short, it's brief. It was developed in conjunction with the IVI, the Innovation Value Institute. Free tool, try it out, give you some good information. And there's the link for the ITIL 4 and the Cloud White Paper. If you click along there, um, follow the instructions, you will receive the white paper um, for all those details. Uh, uh, I can quickly interrupt, uh, uh, Mark. Uh, there's a couple of comments coming in. If we can share the links, yeah, of course, it will be in the uh, webinar recording email I'm that everybody will it. get. Uh, I will do that. Absolutely, yes, yes. They will be shared uh, out. Absolutely. We will share them with you. Indeed, yes. Um, very briefly, just as we close off here, a review, uh, sorry, the CCC portfolio, we're vendor neutral. Um, we don't compete with other training organizations. We complement any other training that's out there. We take the business view of training um, and just to represent the portfolio there, cloud, IoT, big data, blockchain, and AI. More details on our website. We won't go into that today. There will be more webinars throughout the year about the portfolio itself, but just to mention it to you there. And um, we'll start bringing the session to a close. Um, there might be some Q&A, but beforehand, I'd just like to say, Marcel, fantastic to have you with us. Thank you very much for your oversight. You've been traveling globally delivering Idle4 Foundation, having some good conversations. I know in preparation of, of this webinar, we had some good chats about what to include and how to position that paper. I thank you for that. My um, pleasure. It was a joy working with you about uh, for this webinar. And I always, I'll plug it again. Idle Royalty here at the CCC. Marcel, one of the lead architects and one of the authors, fantastic to have you. Now, um, I don't know, Marcel, um, do we have any questions come in there? Just uh, we, yeah, we, I already we, answered quite a number of questions. Uh, anything else? We'll, just for people online, we'll give it a minute or two if there's anything else we need to answer, and then I'll bring proceedings to a close. And there is one question. Um, what is the recommended institute should I take ITIL certification with? <laughs> yeah, find an, uh, yeah, because we are also working with ITpreneurs, then I should find a training partner who is using the, the high quality ITpreneurs materials. But you could expect that kind of answer. <laughs> sure. <laughs> that, that's an answer there. And then there's lots of information available uh, throughout that. So if you have a preference, go for it. Uh, Marcel yeah. has said uh, he's been involved with the ITpreneurs aspect. Um, yeah, I think that that's fine. Have we anything else there? Uh, that you haven't answered already? You've been busy answering away? Uh, I've been quite busy answering quite a number of questions. Great. Um, okay, if, if there isn't, because I assume we can send out some of those questions and answers to everybody else? Yeah, yeah, we, ha we have a, qu a question. Okay. For example, um, uh, Idle 4 talks about the co-creation of value and service relationships. Um, what do you think of realizing the co-creation and building up a good relationship with those cloud service providers like Microsoft and Amazon? <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, that comes up a lot, especially with some of the major public cloud providers. Microsoft, Amazon, Google can be put in there and one or two others. Um, yeah, I mean, that's interesting that somebody said, OK, we've been talking about co-creation. Idle talks about co-creation yeah. uh, from the theoretical level there. Now, practical, what does that mean? A couple of things I would suggest. Um, the, the public cloud providers like Microsoft and, and Amazon, uh, recently they, they, they want to get a little bit closer to their customers and they've position some technical account manager types to have conversations and to be a bit more public facing with some of their at least larger customers. So th there's a start is uh, there's somebody to talk to. Now, sometimes you'll find that 
there's very little they can do. Remember, said about the SLAs and the contracts that in some cases the contract might bind you into the maximum you can get from a cloud provider. Um, so that might limit some of that. But generally, it's knowing and working with the cloud providers to know what you're getting, how you're getting it, and understanding that back. The co creation goes two ways one with the cloud provider for what you get, then back to the customer, your own customer internal or external, what they expect, and working the two through. Now, um, what happens, and maybe you have a comment on this as well, is that there's a role in the middle, I'll keep this short now, a role in the middle called cloud broker. We talk about it in the Professor Cloud Service Manager and the Cloud Technology Associate course. Uh, say an IT function, IT department, taking on the role of understanding the cloud world, the business world, and almost being in the middle of co-creating the value by understanding what you get and what's expected and translating that. That's a key part, in my view, of this co-creating value. The technology is over there, the requirements are over here and pulling the two together. Sometimes it's explaining what they don't get. A lot of the time it's explaining the extra stuff they can get, but we have to mature, we have to change, we have to implement these value systems and thinking to get that value. So I don't, have you anything else to add to that, Marcel, do you think? No, no I think you provided a very complete oh. answer. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have another one coming in. Um, uh, the chain in service activities is as strong as the weakest link. Uh, what can you do when the cloud provider seems to be the weakest link? Okay, uh, seems to be the weakest link. That's an interesting point. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. You're the weakest link in the chain because you haven't adapted. So a couple of things there. Um, so we're looking at service chain. What is it that defines them as the weakest link? Is it they're inflexible? Well, we've just said a lot of these contracts are inflexible, but they give you superior technology and the flexibility of that technology. So I normally think that first thing is to look internally and see, are they the weakest link or have you modified your organization, your ways of working to be more adaptable? to this. One example is change control, change management, that the technology can be changed in seconds, but your change management process or cab or whatever that is could take three weeks to allow a change through. In that case, it's not the cloud provider that's the weakest link, it's you. So I'd always challenge that to say, look internally first and see, is it the provider or is it something internal we need to address? Address the internal things, and then you know it's a cloud provider, that's the weakest link. And then go back to that plan phase, looking at the strategy, looking at the type of cloud provider. Are they the right fit? Are they the right clouds? Are they the right tools you're being provided? Um, how are they doing that one, Marcel? <laughs> <What do you think? laughs> uh, we we ha also have another question. Um, okay, we'll go one final one then, I think we'll bring things Yeah, the up. final one. What's the value? It's not a real cloud question, but what's the yeah. value of ITIL? What brings ITIL to companies? That's a very good question. You know, ITIL, that's also one of the reasons that ITIL um, uh, has been updated. You know, when you look at ITIL version 3, released in 2007, um, more and more the ITIL uh, got a, a, yeah, more or less an, an old fashioned image that it is not the, the right framework to use and to apply in combination with organizations that are working more and more agile. Um, personally, I disagree. You can go through the different life cycle stages 500 times a day. But nevertheless, you know, a good reputation comes by foot and goes by horse. So um, uh, because ITIL got more and more a negative image, uh, uh, that's also one of the reasons that ITIL 4 is now here. But I must say ITIL 4 is prepared for the future. It is the framework the modern framework that is aligned with the modern methodologies of working, the modern technologies. It is absolutely prepared for the future to not only deliver, it, it gives you um, an, a model to uh, deliver um, a value not only to the customer, but to all stakeholders to work together to create a much higher level of acceptance and quality across the whole chain. Um, uh, in a way that all stakeholders are getting happy, that you create a win-win-win-win-win situation. 
um, and uh, yeah, it is absolutely aligned to what I already mentioned, the new methodologies and the new technologies that are out there. It is not copying or replacing it. It is aligned, optimally aligned with a much broader scope. So it is covering um, um, everything uh, underneath, let's say, um, IT service management, which in essence has now a much broader scope than it ever had. Yeah. Fantastic. Straight from the lead architect of Idle 4. Fantastic, Marcel. I'll give this final, I guess, um, analysis there as well. As you said, Idle 4 is aligned. Now, it's important for people to realize it's what you do with the technology. It's what you do with these models. It's what you do with Idle 4 that's important. Yeah. Because they're aligned to it, but it's what you do that's important. Yeah. On that note, everybody, I think we'll bring proceedings to a close. I would like to thank everybody for taking time out of your work today to join us. Thank you yeah. very much. I do hope this has been relevant. I've got a lot from it from Marcel. Marcel, again, I would like to thank you for joining us. I My like pleasure. To that. Thank you. I, I'm going to put you on the hook now and say we might do another session sometime soon, expand this a bit more. I think there's more to be said. But for today, thank you. Thank you, everybody. And um, have a pleasant day. Thank you all. Mm -hmm.